never fall in love again. again. I will be sure that the lady is a friend. If I am in love, so true. I will be sure that the lady is just like you. Mama, mama, hey. <laughs> Welcome to the Married at First Sight, Season 15, Episode 9 Review. This is Couples Couch with Pat. And I'm Cam. You got beef, yo? Like, we could do this early. No, this is every, we could do every this Thursday. now. Like, because I want Hell all the smoke, we're back my with dog. Another high my level dude, over my you. man. I wow. want all the smoke. You got something to say? Yo, you put on a pair of leggings and now you're from Brooklyn. Yeah, <laughs> first of all, I am Bronx. from the Bronx. Same not thing. Nothing wrong with, you know, Brooklyn, but that's not where I'm from. And, 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 yes. and, and shout out to the, <laughs> let me do a Patrick. Shout out to the couple's couch. Oh, it's on that on that oh, side. You're, you're not doing <laughs> hey, me. Don't let me know. Hold on, hold on. Let me not fall. You're about to fall hey, over. Hey, shout out. I'm going to break the island. The island about shout to flip over. Shout out to the... To the <laughs> Get your ass <laughs> off the island. <laughs> what do you think? You're in Mitch's house? <laughs> Get your ass off where we eat. <laughs> Yo, Unless you're serving your ass for a treat. We started early with all this. I know. All right, go ahead with your in- intro. Welcome, welcome. If you are new to our channel, if you are not new, you know what I'm about to say. We do not get into the nitty gritty details of everything that happened in the episode unless we see fit, right? Mm-hmm. But before we get started, let's do some housekeeping. Oh, good. Everybody, take a quick pause. It took a lot out of me to sit on that island. <laughs> take a quick pause. Head on over to Instagram. Follow us. Our at to our Instagram page is running across the bottom of your screen right now. Go follow us. Our following is getting bigger on there. Yeah. I'm like, this is where we post all our updates. Everything regarding everything is there. So follow us on Instagram. Also, shop our store. <laughs> I don't want to see a yawn in this whole episode. I don't want to see or the flamingo the, the flamingo gets it. <laughs> Yo. Shop Angry. our store. Check out our website. You see the new colors, right? You see the new colors, right? So check out our store. There's more colors. Um, we're wearing the blue color uh, unisex fit. So check us out, right? <laughs> do, do some people only listen to us? They don't see us? They don't see what we got on? Well, we have navy blue as well. This is the blue. We also have navy I believe in our on our fans, and they know the difference between blue and navy blue. So check out our site. The link to our site is in the description box below this video. And leggings are now live on our site. There are two styles of leggings for. Li- <laughs> they lit. They running around. <laughs> Just go on our site, see leggings running around all over the place. Find them on our site. Choose your leggings. Order them now. There's two styles to them. I'm so excited about these leggings. Yes. Socks are coming soon. Don't you worry. I didn't forget about the socks. Socks are coming. They're in the pipeline. Check out our merch. Thank you so much for your support. All right. Let's get into this week's episode. Let's get into it. Okay. The name of this episode is called, Are You Gaslighting Me? Or if you're from an urban setting, it's, Are You For Real? <laughs> The show opens up with Morgan and Ben lifting weights, but I can't hear nothing he's saying because he got like this ring around his mouth. And I was like, is this toothpaste or ben, is it? Ben looked like he just got done working out and he was dehydrated. You know, you get that white crust, that P. Diddy crust. It was so like, what is happening? I quit watching the TV. And Patrick turned around. He's like, I don't want to watch the show. This is <laughs> nasty. I can't. Or the like, people that are talking, they get that spit that... Uh, spreads like, and with the oh, it's like, wipe your mouth, bro. Don't turn around. When the you're producers to you. though have the camera in front of him, so somebody can be like, "Yo, pause, quick, get a wash, get a get a wash rag or a wipe or." The just... producers like to hear me talk. <laughs> they uh, they, this on they set the cast members up so that I got something to talk That's about. They help like, our show. Thank you. Help Ben out. Like, 
what's going on. Other couples are still uh, settling into their everyday lives. Uh, Morgan and Ben decide to go swimming. And they meet up with this lady who's dressed as a mermaid. And she has two extra tails for them to put on to swim and have like a mermaid swimming tail thing. So Morgan, or Megan, what's her name? Morgan. Morgan set up a date for her husband of something she wanted to do. She said that this would be every little girl's dream. My daughter would be ecstatic to put on a mermaid tail. Patrick, not so much. He would be like, I'm yo, this is on... not for real, right? You didn't, like, you would be like, I'm not doing this. They'd be like, well, what color do you want? The clear one. <laughs> When the, the one that is showing that I'm not going to do yeah, this. The one that's not waterproof because I ain't getting in that water either. <laughs> I was like, why did you set your husband to do this? Like, yeah, come maybe on. you and your girls should have done this. They would be like, come on, you ready to be a mermaid? Come on, I'd be like, I don't know what y'all talking about. I didn't wear the right wig for this. Wait, wait, why you got to bring my wigs into this? Because you're not wearing that beautiful, silky. Well, you know, this is giving. Girl. Today. This is giving. Um. Yes, body wave. And it'll be gave to the bottom of the pool. You jump in the water with that thing. Huh? Let's move on to the next Come scene. Come out the water with corn yeah. So refreshing. <laughs> next, Nate and Stasha are out swimming. And she asked him, like, on a spectrum, you know, of 1 to 10, where is he at with his love for her? He says he's at a 4 out of 5. I'm sorry. <laughs> Four out of ten. Four out of ten. I'm tripping. Meaning, uh, he says... Forty percent. Yes. <laughs> and it didn't matter if they would have been in an Olympic-sized <laughs> swimming know. pool. It wasn't enough water to cool off the fire that burned within her when she started forty oh. percent. So he asked her, so where are you at? And she says, I'm at an eight out of ten. Like, I'm almost to falling in love with you. And he's like, oh, now I feel bad for saying a four out of ten. And she's Cap. like, no, say how you feel. Say how you feel. Cap. But you've only known Nate for three weeks, Stasha. Like, come on now. Three weeks. So he says that before he can say that he's falling in love with her, he has to have more experiences with her. He's like, I need to have more dates with you. Like, we haven't had many dates. We haven't even gotten drunk together. She's like, well, you know, I don't want you to say I love you by decision day, but you kind of do, but you kind of don't, but you kind of do. So you do need to say it. And that's where that scene ended. She she wants him to say, I love you. Yeah, but she makes herself look pitiful by the way in which she goes about begging him to say he loves her. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing, Stasha. Is it me or is it wild to be in love with someone in only three weeks of knowing them? I'm just asking for a friend. Stasha, I got you, girl. The next few scenes, the couples are talking about love. Well, let's give them something to talk about. 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 How about love? Alexis and Justin are home smoking hookah in the house. <laughs> Oh, that was a hookah? <laughs> I was like, damn. All right, Alexis, I'll match you. <laughs> like, what is happening in the house? <laughs> Where the dog at? Where the dog at? <laughs> you got his head up. <laughs> no more. No more. Put it out. Put it out. Put it out. My God, coma is good. I can't. I can't. So they talk about love. Justin says he was in love with a girl um, that he lost his virginity to when he was 20 years old. Surprising. Um, Alexis said he was a late bloomer. Remember that? <laughs> he said he was her yes man and did everything for her. Her yes man and did everything for her. So you're playing the same role. Alexis says, do you believe in the concept of falling out of love? Justin says he doesn't believe in it. Alexis says once she loves someone, it doesn't just Let me show it. you. <laughs> he said, I don't believe you could just fall out of love. Watch me. Watch this. Yeah, hold my beer. <laughs> With an usher. 
Watch this. They call me U S H E R R A. So, um, uh, she said she felt lonely that day in the candy store. Um, during their argument, she says that she wants to feel secure again, like she did on the honeymoon. That's where she's trying to get back to with that. You mean when someone else was flipping a bill and you was on vacation? Uh uh-uh. Let's move on to the next scene. I'd like to feel that way too. Like. To f- Come on, I'd like to feel the comfort of someone else paying for our vacation and us just hanging out. Get out of here. Next, we Nate and Stasha are now begging ass. in the home discussing love. Begging. <laughs> um, I don't want him to say, I don't need him to say I love you. Let me but get I it want out. him to. Let me get it out. Stasha asks, what is he committed to doing? Nate says he's committed to being in a marriage. She says, I could have someone live with me and have a joint account with me, no, you but can't. not love me. No, you can't. Nate says, okay, you're trying to play devil's advocate. You came on the, the show. Time out. You came on the show because you couldn't do those exact things. <laughs> That's why you're on the show. Because you couldn't find nobody to live with you. And you couldn't find nobody to share a bank account. And you couldn't find nobody to put a baby in you. Jeez. They just wanted to practice. Nobody wanted to perform. Okay, so. So, no, you couldn't. Let's get he that says, straight. I feel like you're trying to get my attention in the wrong way, and you're trying to manipulate me into saying what you want me to say. Stasha says, is this our first fight, and now do you feel differently about me? And he says, I just feel like you're trying to manipulate me into saying some things. And Stasha's like, I just want him to like love me. Like, No, you want him to fall for your manipulation. That's what you want. In that moment. In when, that he, when he gave you nothing and called you out on it. Yeah. You resorted to making faces like a 16-year-old that's yeah, not getting her way. Yeah, when you said you're trying to manipulate me, she looked like, Love what me. are you talking about? Well, is this our first? Do you feel differently about me? You, your questions are manipulative. Right. You're trying to make him do something that he's not willing to do. That's called manipulation. He don't love you. He do you want him to tell you he that? Don't you, he don't want you. He he's don't told want you. you want him to tell you those words? I mean, I'm, I'm almost that I love you. <laughs> I'm not. How's the face? <laughs> and he right. looked dead at her and was like, yeah, I'm not there. You're at a 40. We're not even halfway there. I just met you, bro, bro. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next scene. I can't with this. Mitch and Kristen go out for karaoke. And it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And it's just the two of them. It's just the two of them. They here. rented a room. Because I've rented one of those karaoke rooms before. Uh, yeah, I went for with you. For our football yeah, team. Yeah, I for remember all that. Of them. And it was a large group of people. Right. If it was just me and Kamar and we went to sing karaoke, we'd have done it right there. we put on YouTube right here. <laughs> right there. With the words, with the lyrics. Right In the there. living room. <laughs> and it's bigger than the room they rented. Right. You worried about wasting money and material. You wasted money. You rented a room for y'all two to sing to each other. <laughs> so Mitch starts freestyling Producers for Kristen. And Kristen is so proud and says that Mitch is actually really good at freestyling. Mitch and Kristen out here looking like and sounding like... They move on to talk about uh, Kristen's dreams of flipping houses. Mitch says the idea of it triggers something in him because he just feels like it's not fair that these developers come in and buy houses and put uh, people out of their homes. Mitch says he just wants to speak up for what he feels like is not fair. Meanwhile, Kristen's like, I know the world has injustices and we just have to fight and then Mitch is like, don't comfort me. Like, don't comfort me because it's coming off inauthentic. Christian, Christian says, Mitch, do not call me inauthentic. And he says, I didn't say you were inauthentic. I'm saying what you said was inauthentic. And then Kristen is like, are you trying to gaslight me? My view is that I see what he was saying. On by unpopular opinion. I see what he was saying about... You're disingenuous. <laughs> yeah, I'm inauthentic. I see what he was saying about the people being put out of their houses, and then you know co- developers come out, come in, and take over and like redo these neighborhoods to make them nicer. I get that, 
And I even get the part where he was telling Kristen, like, you're being inauthentic because she started to go on a kind of a speech for me. It came off as a speech that she was making, but it was to clearly just mellow him out in that moment. Like, she was just trying to, like, bring it down by saying that. I'm not saying she didn't genuinely mean it, but you it felt very speechless. It's just my thoughts, but I feel like... She felt like he wasn't in support of her dreams. And I think he was just for the principle of how he felt about gentrification. Is that the right word to use? It, or flipping these houses? He just had to stand so strong in it. I think he missed the whole point of her just wanting to be a flipper. Flipper. <laughs> That's all she wanted She's to not do. trying to change the world. She's not trying to create social injustices for anybody that's not what she's out to do she just wants to do what she enjoyed that's all she meant about it in that moment i think they both were being they were missing each other they were missing the mark have you seen your bathtub and your stove top what is his you, bathtub and his stove top got because to do with they're this? so disgusting and it's so irresponsible that you have lost the ability or the right to tell me anything pertaining to anybody's living quarters or situation. <laughs> you're quarters. dirty, you're nasty, you're disgusting, and I don't want to hear it from you, Mitch. No. If you want to live in squalor your whole life, and if that's what you're comfortable in, then you go ahead, go ahead hug a tree, and leave it, live in squalor. I work hard so I can play hard. Okay, that has and nothing if, to do with that's none That's exactly of this. what it talks about. If I want to take my money and invest in properties to make them nicer, to resell them, then that's what I'll do. And I'm not going to feel bad about it. Because what? If I don't buy the property, the people that are there are going to make the property nice again? No, it's not going to happen. Okay. And with all that said, what does how he lives in his home have anything to do with her wanting to flip houses? It has nothing to do I with their... Like that's well, let me finish. Fuel. It has nothing to do... As long as they're not married. They're married. He wants to make her live in squalor like him. And she ain't for it. And I feel her. Did he's he say dis that? He's disgusting. <laughs> he lived it. I don't need him to say nothing to me. I've seen down. how you live. Calm down. I'm not calming down. Cause you and you full of it too. You know, you know I see where he's coming I from. Why well, I can't understand two story this. house, and you ain't worried about anybody who they had to kick out of here for them to build this house for us. You don't give a damn. I do. No, don't you don't. don't Your yeah, actions, I can say it because it's true. Don't say that. Whatever. If we would have moved here and there was somebody living in a little dilapidated house they're like yeah for us to build your house we're gonna have to move them off the property we'll move their ass i would never i would have to find a different location you told that to all the deer and all the animals that lived here told them to get up off their ass and move out so he got a problem with that too for you to build so your house bad. and i just think it's materialistic but i'm not bad i'm for real He's You're so bad. bad. You're lying to these people. I will not allow you <laughs> to come on here and lie to our 8,000 subscribers. Kamara is bougie. <laughs> she does, she expects a certain kind of life. And if it ain't up to her standards, she's going to flip a bitch. And I don't care what nobody say. That's the truth. <laughs> free Pat hashtag. Hashtag Free Pat. It's the truth. She only want to talk that, you know, they shouldn't be moving people out. I Come don't. on, we can make $30,000 off this flip. No. Move no. their ass. Get them out. He ain't real, I'm dog. co-sign. I am real. He ain't real. I'm getting, if we get 30, we probably get 35 and we get them out quicker. Everybody knows me. <laughs> Yo, this is business. Capitalism, baby. Anybody, I'm the boss dude. I'm a real when you punch me, me again, and what? you're gonna be flipping this house because ain't nobody gonna be living in here. <laughs> Anybody who Stop knows me, me. No, I'm for the people. You know, like I would never. <laughs> what are you throwing your cup down for? This is how people be like. When, this is the reaction when Trump used to go off on his tangents. His press person be like, God damn, shut up. Next scene shows Morgan and Ben talking about love. Ben said he never been in love. Um, Morgan said she was in love with someone, and they showed up for each other all the time. Ben says that he had someone he was really close to, but there were so many bad things going on in his life at that time that they ended up creating space between one another and getting pushed away. Um, ben reflects on how he talked to Morgan during the honeymoon, and he said... 
that he projected his feelings onto her because of his own insecurities, saying hurt people hurt people. Ben been going to therapy. Says that. Been out here with them therapy he, words. You well, can tell has, when people go to therapy. It's just like when people start working out. Just like me. I will tell y'all all about my workouts. Just because it's new to me. That's all he doing with he somebody says went to therapy. He also has daddy issues. Hurt people issues. hurt people. I didn't realize I had daddy issues. Always wanted to make him proud. And he never gave me a prayer. Ben's dad is like, what the fuck? Is he talking about? I took him to Magic Mountain, T ball, soccer. Like I did all this for him. The muscles, I got you your gym membership. You gonna play me like this? He says No that wonder he ain't is, never gave you approval. You he said it. he is enough and that oh. she is enough. And Morgan says this is really good that they're having this moment and that she would always be there to support him. I'm a horrible person because I can't take all this self help. This is just so, making me sick to my stomach. He just can't hurt people, be hurt in tune people. with his feelings. Anytime you hear someone being one with their feelings, it's like it's something that grinds within his soul. Nate and Stasha have a cooking lesson. They sit down to eat once they're done cooking, and she asks him, How does he feel since their argument? He says he feels good, but feels like she was like trying to play games with him. Stasha says, Saying that he. Or that she was trying to manipulate him was a way of making her feel like he's attacking her character. But that's what you did. You tried to manipulate him. He ain't attacking your character. Don't even come on here starting to play victim. Stasha says that she's just afraid of Nate not being in love with her. And Nate says, you don't have to worry, you know, because I want to tell you something. Go I talk to Ben because hurt people hurt people and you are enough. He says, I want to tell you something. And she's looking like, oh, I think he's about to say I love you. And he's like, I really like you. And you're beautiful. <coughs> and you should have faith. And he left it at that. <laughs> and the thing is, Stasha don't even love that dude. Real talk, all she's doing now is she turned it into a challenge to get him to say that he loves her. That's all she's into. She don't love him and she's not looking for love from him. She just wants the word said that she... So she feels like she won. Next, Miguel and Lindy are talking about love. And they talk about what does it take for you to fall in love? What does it take for you to fall in love, Patrick? Lots of sex. All right. So Miguel <laughs> takes time. <laughs> Miguel says, if he is with someone who acts up and has outbursts, and breakdowns, he's like, okay, see you later, bye. Yep, good. He uh, deems it as I love that. I love, I, he I, for the I accept, I accept his, uh, his, his way of life. I, <laughs> I like it. He's like, he wouldn't stay around. He a says way of dating. He wants to be firm and put his foot down because he doesn't want things to get toxic. Yep. You Lindy. yell at me at Walmart, I will turn around and walk out the door. <laughs> and that'll be the end of it. I said Nathan's hot dog buns. <laughs> Not <laughs> you added it. He gone. He gone. <laughs> you want to argue with you in front of these people at this store, so we can both look like idiots. You want to yell and to argue? Argue with yell you. Yell and argue and all this carrying on. You can do it by yourself. I'll be in the car. Lindy says she feels like love is giving someone grace. You know. That's because that's what she needs. And loving them at their worst. That's because she want to be at her worst. Lindy says, if 90% of the marriage is amazing and 10% is annoying, she's not going to give up her marriage to find someone that can make her happy 91% of the time. And that's what Miguel said. That's fine. I'll go ahead and do it for you. <laughs> Miguel says, if his feelings weren't involved, he would be counting the days down to get out of there. Yeah. Because yeah, you're like, crazy. No He's like, you're yeah, off. that's what I'm not going to do. You are a child. She has like those child tantrums. You know? She has not gone past 17. Her family probably still treats her like she's a senior in high school. Everyone in her church circle probably treats her like a little kid. And Miguel ain't for it. He go treat her like an adult. The first time she act like a kid, he go bounce. Because he's, he's not attached to you. That's what you need to understand. She wants... That security and that he loves me and I can act a fool and he'll still be there. That's what she's looking for. The Miguel un ain't going to give unconditional it to love? Yeah, it ain't going to happen. Yeah, well, you know, start off acting, right? You got put with the wrong person. You should have been put with Justin. <laughs> and speaking of, let's move into the next the scene. The beta lover. 
Next, Justin sets up a romantic date on the beach. Uh, the During the day, Alexis asks, if you were just dating me, would you still want to continue to date me? Justin says, yes, actually. Yeah, I'm a, I would I would definitely continue to stay. Of course he says. Continue yes. to stay dating you. Justin says, well, same question for you, Alexis. Would you continue to stay, you know, sticking around, dating me? Alexis says, actually, no. That Newton situation really got to me. And then Justin started looking disappointed. And Alexis was like, I need you to empathize and understand my perspective. And it's because I'm a get up and go kind of person. Like when you wrong me or you rub me some type of way, I'm out of there. Like I leave. Justin says, I'm more of a sticking it through this this type of, you know, relationship. Like he don't just get up and go. Like <laughs> you gonna press the button and get out of here. Who's that key for? Alexis, anybody tell me I'm the get up and go kind of <laughs> Go. I don't care. Your contract is with the producers. I don't know who else gonna pay you half of the rent, but it ain't gonna be me. You can G O. Go. She say you got Pastor Cal told y'all mm-hmm. it's a choice. Stasha, you took it the wrong way. A choice for what? Are you for talking? love. Okay. She took it as you can make a choice to just say I love you even when you don't love the person and everything else will follow because you're saying I love you. Uh, That's not what it is. The choice is I'm going to stay here and stick here. I'm going to stick here today. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be here today. Like I'm going to give. I woke up and chose you yeah, every day. Every day. I woke up and That's chose. how it works. And you choose when, when they're aggravating you. That's what you're choosing. To not stay. just the good times. Yeah. You're choosing the bad times Most too. Most days Patrick wakes up and chooses violence. <laughs> you see how he acted on something today. Why are you so angry? <laughs> he woke up and chose chaos. <laughs> All the couples are meeting up in the next few scenes. They're, the couples are getting dressed. And then each wife seems to start gifting their husband like a shirt. Like, hey, I got you this shirt. Hey, I got you this shirt. And then I realized like they've each gifted their husband the same shirt. Now, uh, Kristen gives Mitch uh, the same shirt, which he doesn't know everybody else has it. She just thinks it's a present from her. And he's like, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to wear this shirt. He's like giving her pushback and he's like, Mitch would never wear a shirt like this. Like, she's like, can I just talk to you in the bathroom for a second? It is not soiled and dirty. <laughs> so Mitch they, would never wear this shirt. So the bathroom and she has to go ahead and spill the beans like, hey, all of the other husbands got the same shirt as a gift, and it's going to be like a surprise or a funny joke that you all got gifted the shirt. So quit being a dumbass and go along with it. <laughs> so he's This, like, this is what Pastor Cal was talking about. This is the choice you make. When you love someone, you make the choice that, yes, this shirt is stupid. Right. Yes, the fact that all five of us are going to be wearing it is even stupider. Right, right. But I'm going to go at you. They're not going to hear me. <laughs> This but is your problem you're, today. you're over here. Stay over there. <laughs> this is what, yeah, this is what Pastor Cal was talking about. Mm-hmm. When you have to make a choice, this is stupid. I don't want to do it, but I'm married to this person, and mm-hmm. she wants me to do it. So I'm going to make the choice to suck it up and act like a grown person and put the shirt on. That's it. That's it. Not so- like I have many clean clothes in here to choose from anyway. Once everyone arrives, Mitch changes into the shirt that he wants to wear. So he lets everyone see him in the shirt, and then he's like, "Okay, I'm ready to change it to my regular clothes now." And you then he goes and changes for just being a ornery. He's, a, he's just being ornery. He's a b i t c. Okay. I won't finish. Okay. I'm sorry. If so I then don't everybody like it, asks him is. when he comes out, like, "Why you change this shirt?" He's like, "I just don't want to be forced to do things, um, and I don't like people to buy me." you know, things that I have to wear and that, you know, we didn't ask for. And that's why I don't buy stuff for people that, you know, things that they didn't ask for. He's like, I'm not trying to really turn this into a thing. And Kristen's like, well, you made it a thing. So now it's a thing. And I have to let everyone know that I had to reveal the surprise to him because he was making it a thing back at home before he came out. And now he only wore the shirt for just a little bit. And then he was just like, well... Let's talk about the next few scenes because in that next scene, Dr. Pia visits. She is the the guest expert. Dr. Pia is a psychologist. Can we get Frazier? (laughs) Either one of them. I trust them. Frazier? Niles. (laughs) 
And she asked the group to share what it felt like when they had been hurt. Justin says he doesn't bring up his past trauma in his current relationships. That's the face that Alexis makes. As he made. starts to cry. <laughs> but proceeds to tell how he uses his trauma to protect himself in current situations. So you're doing the same thing that you say that you don't do. Alexis says, okay, this none of this is true. Justin's like, well, she doesn't really know me now. Justin was like, or Alexis was like, oh, so now I don't know you? And I wasn't wiping your snotty, <laughs> teary face. Justin says he shuts down because Alexis just doesn't get it. No matter how much he says things, she doesn't understand. Alexis says, but I need to understand you to help you to help us. And everybody was like, oh, girl, you getting it. You getting it. <laughs> and I think that's what Dr. Yeah, this ain't I think her. that's what Dr. Pia did in her head. Like <laughs> This ain't her. This ain't how she really acts. I don't know about that. Manipulative. Extra with her dog. <laughs> dog said... Get her, mama. Get her, mama. Tell her, mama. Tell her, mama. You don't shut your asthmatic self up and go sit down somewhere, Newton. Next, Mitch talks about the shirt gate. Mitch says he doesn't want anyone deciding for him what he needs to wear or what he needs to have. He says that when if he feels like it comes to a point in relationships that you can compromise so much that you lose who you are and become a pushover... And Kristen says she's working to try to please Mitch, but she's now feeling like she's starting to lose herself. She bought you a shirt that you don't like. Kamara buys me shirts and clothes all the time I don't like that I end up having to wear. It's just, you just do it to get over it. Now, do I like someone telling me what to wear? No. On a regular day, Kamara can't tell me wear nothing. I'm going to wear what I want to wear. I don't tell you what wig to put on. So why are you telling me what clothes to put on? You have free pick of your wigs, and I got free pick of my shirts. That's just how it goes. But let me just put the shirt on, man. Get it over with. Next, Morgan and Ben said that they're doing well, um, but, you know, they're on the incline, like, you know, moving up into the right direction. Pia says, what do you need to get closer to Ben? Morgan says she wants more compliments. And Ben is like, I told you today you look drippy and you look icy in your outfit. <laughs> Maria's like, I don't want to be told I'm icy by my husband. I'm not your bro. I want to be told you look beautiful and you look pretty. And then Ben's like, okay, I can do that. But you always acting like my bro. You want me to go to Thai bow classes <laughs> with you? You trying to get me to Muay Thai fight and shoot basketballs and wrestle. It's like you. What is Muay Thai fight? What is that? What kind of fighting is that? Doing a kick and. Knee and elbow and punches oh. fighting. Oh, okay. In Thailand. <laughs> Muay Thai. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I just, you know, I'm not I'm not familiar with this is my first time hearing about Neither it. Neither am I. <laughs> Put on shorts and let everybody kick me. <laughs> but I gotta know what I don't wanna do and Muay Thai I don't wanna do. <laughs> I like punching and elbow and knee, but I don't like getting punched and elbow and knee. <laughs> Lindy says she's not in a space where she can be her authentic self because she's worried if Miguel sees that, then he may not choose her on decision day. I feel like whole time Lindy in her head, like, don't be, don't be real. Don't be real. Don't be real. Like, keep it in. Keep it Absolutely. in. Keep it in. Don't and you better that. continue to do that because if you let keep that little in. angry 17 year old girl out you was talking about, <laughs> she going to be single. Next, Stasha says she doesn't feel like Nate is showing steps to being vulnerable. Nate says he's trying, and what more can he prove? Like, what his, more do you want, want from, from me? me? Him and, and Justin. It's Tyrese. <laughs> Tyrese voice. What more do they want from me? He sound like no, Justin <laughs> with, with Newton. <laughs> what more do you want from me? <laughs> yes. 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 Oh, so Nate is like, what more can he prove? To explain to her, show her that he's all no, in. I'm wrong. Those weren't two of the same conversations because Nate was like, I'm out. Yeah, Nate says she isn't believing what? that he is trying and then he's going to just start giving up. And Stasha starts crying and then she says, he ain't bite. Like, but how long am I supposed to wait though? At least eight weeks. <laughs> That's what the show says, at least. <laughs> Dummy, you didn't read your contract? All right, next. Let's move. <laughs> Nate and Stasha are now back home and Nate says he's irritated because everyone can see he's putting the effort in except for the person that he's doing it for. Nate says Stasha says words don't mean anything that actions do, but what is he supposed to do now that he's showing her and the actions don't mean nothing? 
he says that he's feeling like she doesn't believe him and he's at the point where he's tired of trying to have her believe him. Sasha says, well, I just want you to communicate with your feelings today and every day going forward. I just want you to say I love you. And then Nate was Please? like, listen, you ask for emotion, emotion here now. Like, I, I like it. Here it is. And she's like, no, I don't like it because I feel attacked. Because you're not getting your way? <laughs> So Nay says, I don't believe this is no longer a me thing. This is a you thing. And then he walks off. And I was. <laughs> I went Arsenio. Who, 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 who? It is question. a you problem. Not a me problem. It's a you problem. Yeah. It's like all my problems. They're your problem, not mine. You like, got a problem. Okay, Nay. You know, come through with the yes. making it make sense. Even when I'm wrong, stand 10 toes down. <laughs> Wishy wash like Justin. How we wanna he don't know where he at. Wish Nate you is like, yo, I ain't like it. You're playing games yeah. and I'm not playing He's with you. And this is what it is. Oh, he don't mix words, he don't mince words. Ten toes down. He keeps I used it real. to think he was a, a con man. <laughs> no. I never thought he was a con man. Let me I say still that. You're running a con. You want everybody to think you're 100 percent ten here. toes down. Like that would be part. Of, you I don't go in there wanting to be a con man. He's a good con man. Remember, I don't I used ever to call, think he was a. Con I used man. to call him a bad con man. I never thought he. But was But now good. I think he's a good con man because I'm starting to think he's not a con man, which is what a good con man would want me to think. Get out of here. <laughs> in the last few scenes of this episode, Morgan and Ben are in their apartment, and Morgan says, "Alexis told me everything." By the way. And walks out of the apartment. Ben says, told you what? He's like, can we talk about it? And she never came back in. Morgan says she found out that Ben has been talking behind her back, telling lies, and she will have lots to say to him tomorrow. She was pissed. And that Yo, was the You end said my of left cross one. wasn't no good, and then my front kick was no good. You see the front kick? Well, I know you saw it. Episode one, playing about my martial arts skills. <laughs> Better quit telling people I, I can't kick your ass. You know I can. That was the Ty end. Boom. That was the end of episode nine. I think this episode gave us a little more insight as to how pushy Stasha can be on trying to get someone to give her her way. Right. How Nate ain't for the bull. Yeah. It showed me also how Mitch can just try to stand on principle that he believes in so firm even when he don't need to like i don't feel like he really needed to go that hard about the whole flipping the houses it wasn't that serious and i but i i, I get the and point, she ain't even got serious. no money to buy a house she just spent her life savings on her ex-fiance that cheated on her six months before the wedding you don't have the money to it's flip the house it's a dream this Yo. is her dream she talking about and then i felt like he went way too hard about the shirt and then i also feel like Kristen is losing herself trying to people please for mitch yeah I feel like she's trying to conform so much for him that she's not getting what she really or at or feeling like how she really want to be you know what i mean or acting how she really want to be right and i feel like mitch if he's gonna stand so hard on principles they should be principles like Good hygiene. I knew it. Keeping a clean house. I knew it. Not even a clean house, just a livable house. Drop your comments in the comment section below. We would love to hear from you. So please be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button to support our channel. We are moving on up. We're getting closer to 10,000. I know if you peep that, it's getting a little closer every week. I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Also, stop by our store. Leggings are now live on our site. Socks are on the way. Be sure to check out our store and order some merch. Right, Patrick? I thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Deuces, y'all. Bye, everybody.